Yo, what is going on everybody? David Productions, 345, start of a new video. We made it to AutoZone, you guys can see right there. You gotta pick up some gear oil for the front and rear differentials. So without further ado, see you guys when I get there. Alrighty guys, so we got the four gear oils. We got two quarts of each, 75W90 for the front, two of them, and then 75W140 for the back. Royal purple, of course. So, next up, we've got to go to Harbor Freight tomorrow, get two or three more tools, and then we should be able to do this project. So without further ado, I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. All right, y'all, y'all see where we're at. We're at Harbor Freight. We got to pick up three more things, and then we'll get right into this video. All right, y'all, after spending countless times running around the store, we got the parts we need. We got a seal puller right here. We got a gear oil and fluid pump. And then we got a slide hammer. Ah. You guys see the car is parked up here in the front. And you guys know, no, I'm not using a pressure washer video. The tripod's about to be set up. But basically, the reason I'm making this video, you guys see the title and the thumbnail. I'm pretty sure that my CV axle seal is leaking. So there's fluid going all over my belly pan. I'll insert a video right now. All right, so I took this shield off again. Oh, this is whatever. It's just right here. This is the new stuff. Anyways, so I thought it was gonna be my oil. I thought it was my oil from my car. Made sure everything was tight. It was not that. So step two, I was looking in forums. I'm like, you know what? Let me look up and see what this could be. I'm gonna insert another video right now. So my belly pan, the passenger side of it had oil on it, some kind of oil. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see what this could be. And I kept getting random incorrect gear ratio codes when I would floor it and it would switch to all wheel drive. So I'm pretty sure that my CV axle seal is leaking. So I ordered that from Rock Auto. I'll show you guys that real quick. Mopar, there's a part number. So basically it's a seal that's this big. And I'm pretty sure this is what broke or is leaking in the video you guys seen. Look right there. Yeah, there it is. So see how it's all the way up there as well. There's the part number again. Let's make sure you guys seen that. So in this video, we're gonna be taking apart my passenger side suspension again. Gonna get all this knocked out today, hopefully, because I got work tomorrow. Also guys, let me know down below if you guys like getting the magnets and the stickers in your purchases as well. Makes me feel a little bit better about spending a ton of money, even though this was like 20 bucks. So yeah, hopefully this cheap fix can fix my problem. You guys are probably like, oh, that's pretty easy. Just, it's just a seal. Yeah, but the only problem is it's not that easy. So basically I got a ton of tools I ordered. <laughs> Perfect. So basically I got a ton of tools. I'm gonna go through when I use them in this project. It's not as simple as popping an old seal out, putting the new one in because you guys can see all this is in the way. So I have to disassemble all of this. So without further ado guys, let's get everything set up. Let's get right into this video. Hopefully this doesn't take me too long. Because right now it's like 11 o'clock. I'm assuming by the time we're done with this, it'll be dark. Hopefully not, but without further ado, let's get right into this video. All right guys, first step in this process is to jack up the car. So you're gonna reach your hand under here. Feel for like a triangle and a square. That's where the jack is gonna go. Just enough for the wheel to be off the ground. Perfect. Socket for these is 22. Since my car has rusted lug nuts and they kind of expanded. You guys see 22 and a half. It's like a flipped socket. 22 and 22 and a half. one <laughs> <laughs> all right catch up with you guys after these are off this is gonna be a pain in the ass because these are rusted so i'll see you guys in a second also guys say for example you're taking off a wheel like this say for example 
turning the lug nut off. Lug nut gets stuck like this, no worries. Put it back on a little bit to the stud. Take yourself a screwdriver, tap it lightly. And there you go. Wheel is off and then we're gonna put this underneath the car so it doesn't fall. No! No! Let me grab the camera. Alrighty guys, so I'm trying to focus in on it because it's hard to. But, you guys see all that liquid right there? You guys see? I'm trying to point the flashlight right where it's at. So, what we're doing is removing this because this should not be like this. Alright, so you guys can see the boot is in fine condition. You guys see all that liquid right there dripping? I'm pretty sure that's from the seal, which is right behind the axle. You guys see the boot? The boot's in okay condition. No problems, this is a new CV, so nothing's leaking from there. But if you guys look, I'm going to try to zoom in on the video. All of that crap right there. Come on, focus, bro. Right there, all that stuff that's leaking from the seal. You guys see how it's like coated all over there? Look at the drain plug right there on the right. I'm trying to get the focus. There we go. The drain plug is tight, so it's not that. You guys see it is around the CV. So without further ado, let's start disassembling this. We're not going to be taking it fully apart, but obviously I want to make sure everything is good. At first I thought it was just going to be the bolt for the bottom. Let me zoom in. I thought it was going to be the bottom Torx bolt we seen, the external one. But obviously the grease is on the actual axle as well. So, it's obviously the CV seal. So, without further ado, let's start disassembling this. And I'll see you guys in a second. Alright you guys, first step in this process is to remove the tie rod right here. It's a 21 millimeter. Alright you guys, so you guys see the cotter pin right here? Just going to have to come out first. Cotter pin out. Next step, what I did was I put my two-ton jack right there. Get the impact. You guys see, 21 millimeter. Right there. Rusty castle nut is off, which even though I replaced this a couple months ago. Now in order to get this tie rod actually off, you're gonna need to hit right here with a hammer. Just be careful, don't damage the damn uh, threads. All right, let's hit right here on the knuckle part. You guys can also hit on the top just a little bit. There we go, just a little bit. And get this out of the way. Make sure to not leave this tie rod hanging. We're gonna grab something real quick. Put this on a box right there. Do you know what, I'll be right here. We're gonna take off this axle nut. It's a 32 millimeter. Let me grab that real quick and I'll be right back. Next up is to take off the axle nut. 32 millimeter. Got the Milwaukee right here. Let me take this off. This should be a relatively new CV. No, this should be. This is a relatively new CV, so this should come off easily. Oh yeah, baby. By the power of Milwaukee, I summon you to come off. Boy, if you don't Yeah, see, new CV still moves. That's a good thing. It's a great thing actually. Next up is to take off this link right here. Since we have the pressure underneath the car with the jack, why is this not focusing? There we go. Since we have the pressure with the jack underneath, this should be easy. This is a 21 right here. All right, we're switching to the small impact. There we go. That was, that was kind of loose, it's kind of concerning. Link is through. Put the link to the side. All right, so next steps are to remove this bolt right here and then the one on the lower control arm as well. So let me show you guys what sizes these are real quick. This one should be an 18. Yeah, that's an 18. All right, so for the top bolt, you're gonna need a six millimeter hex. You're gonna put it right here. And you're gonna basically get a wrench. I have a ratchet wrench, size 18. You can have it on loosen, and you're gonna take this off. So I'm gonna 
catch up with you guys after I take off the top, the top one. So real quick, a little trick on removing this again. When you're taking it off, put the hex right here. So it's having it push against the knuckle. So when you're undoing it with a ratchet wrench or a regular wrench, you can hold that while simultaneously holding this brakes. So the whole knuckle doesn't twist. So it'll just be a lot easier to take off. Alrighty, we are at this step. We remove the top. Now you guys see the axles right there. So we got two options. Option number one, remove this clevis and take off that and see if we can twist this this way. So I'm gonna try first and if that does not work, option two is to take size 21, remove the lower ball joint right here, hit it with the hammer, basically move this whole thing over to here, which I'm probably gonna do, and then take off the clevis. So I'm gonna just remove the lower ball joint bolt. So let me get the 21. Oh yeah. You guys see how it's not moving? Take that sledge, hit the knuckle. Let's twist this a little bit. All right, brakes are off. So, you guys see, take that all off at once, easy. All right, so next step. I see this clevis bolt right here, one there. So, got 121 in here. Next one on the breaker bar. Right, so guys, look, that's the nut over there. What are you gonna undo? Get the compact, let's see if this one can take it off. Nuts off, put it back on. Not all the way though, just a little bit. Grab that jack again, you jack it up. This is what you're gonna do. Hit this and let the bolt come through. Cause this bolt, you guys can see it has marks. I don't forget what it's called, but you gotta hit it through. So, you guys can see, once you let it back down, bolt comes out, perfect. We're gonna remove the top three nuts in the engine bay just to get this out because why not make up job a whole lot easier. Remove this cover. It should be 13 mils. Take these three out real quick. These should be pretty loose or not. Don't lose these, these are very important. All right. Y'all you know, hear the strut falls. All right, struts out. Perfect. We got access to the axle now. So you guys can see the boots are fine. It's just, the seal is leaking. So the next step is to get this out. You guys see that? That's not supposed to be like that. So give me one second. I'm gonna grab my tools and get this ready to go. Alrighty guys, so this is out. Let me teach you guys how to do this real quick. So the way that I took this axle out actually took a little bit of time. Alrighty guys, so how I got this out actually, I said, said a quick prayer. I was like, hopefully this works. And before the last time I took this off, I had an, an idea where I put the small pry bar here. I put my foot here like a brake pedal, held it, took my other pry bar on the top, put it about like right here. You guys see the bracket? I kind of used that like that. It's kind of like that. And I was hitting this like that. And that's what I did. I just did that and it came out. The idea just came to me after that. And you guys see, 
this fit right here, put this right here, hold my foot like a brake pedal against it to give it pressure, then the other part right here. Do you guys see this is the axle? This axle's fine, splines are fine. Everything's I'm gonna clean all this up obviously. Because this is all the grease from the seal. I'll show you guys what the problem is. You guys see right there all the liquid? This seal right here. That's what's leaking all the fluid all over the you guys see it's all over here. But we're gonna clean this all up, then we're gonna refill it. Luckily the diff drain and fill plug is right here. So we're gonna clean all this up first. Put the new axle back in, or not the new axle, put this axle back in. You guys can see this is still brand new. All right, so this is the seal puller from Harbor Freight. I'm gonna use this to take out the seal and clean everything up. Put this all back together. Let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna do this with two hands. So basically you kind of go like this and pry it out. So I'll catch up with you guys after the seal is out. All right, here's the seal. You guys see, it looks very old. Sorry about my hands, my hands are dirty, greasy hands. Oh yeah, that's all the diff fluid. It looks kind of smashed in. So yeah, this definitely could be the reason why everything's leaking. Cause if you guys look, I know it's hard to see, but this fluid all over, but yeah. Definitely worth replacing this for sure. I know this is kind of a lot of work for this one thing, but if it keeps your front differential sealed, that's all that matters. All right, new seals in. What I did was I put it on, took this small block of wood, put it like this. Where did the socket go? Grab the socket, put it like that, and basically hammer the socket like that onto here just to make it even as you guys can see it's all cleaned up mostly seal is sitting flush alrighty guys axles back in perfect next up take your eight millimeter hex you guys see that bolt right here this is gonna be for the gear oil we use two hands take this off That is stuck on there. Breaker bar time. Grab your breaker bar. Yes, All right, so basically grab your breaker bar. Let's see if I can do this with one hand to show you guys. Breaker bar in, and then this. I just broke it loose. Obviously, it didn't capture on the camera. You guys heard it. Guys, this is probably gonna be a longer video. I mean, it's all right, like. So I'm doing all this today. Probably gonna do the rear another day for a different video, but. Plug camera. I don't know what that is, but that definitely needs to be changed. Transfer pump. Two hoses. What we're gonna do is connect these two hoses to both of these pumps or both of these valves. Alright y'all, I started this. Got the tube to fit. Kind of used a thinner one. This one was too thick. And then where is it? Kind of put the two tubes together. I have this crim kind of thing. So you guys can see the fluid's already coming out. All you gotta do is pump this until all the fluid drains out. And then keep going until you get the last drop. It might take a little bit. And then we'll go over how much fluid I pulled out. All right, I've been trying for a little bit. This is all the fluid I pulled out. Mind you, this is a really big container. Anyways, this stuff smells like stray butt. You nasty. So this, this definitely was the smell that I was smelling, but this shit smells like trash, bro. Anyways, I'm gonna refill this until it starts leaking out of the fill slash drain hole, and then we should be good with the fluid. I'm pretty sure I got, I got everything out. I just kept hearing air bubbles for a couple minutes, and then we should be good. So I'll catch you guys in a second. I'm gonna just quickly clean off the clean and the inside of this hose. I can't talk. So the fluid is clean when I put the new stuff in right there. So without further ado. Give me a second guys and I'll catch right up with you. Alrighty guys, just like that, you guys can see, yeah, spilled a little bit of diff fluid then I sprayed the brake clean to clean it up. Anyways, sorry about the mower in the background, but you guys can see, plug is back in. I'm gonna spray it one more time. A little brake clean will never hurt. All right, you guys see right there, 
probably try to zoom the, the plastic that's the under shield so that's why the liquid is dripping everywhere you guys see though diff fluid looks good hey guys that's how you do the front diff the axle and the seal now what we're gonna do is reassemble all of this basically it's how you took it apart it's how you put it back together all right you guys real quickly make sure you're torquing all your bolts and nuts down i'm gonna show you guys real quick i'm using the tains manual you gotta check this out it has all the torque specs and everything so you guys see all-wheel drive 157 that's the axle nut so make sure to do that all the other ones i think this is like 21 and then you tighten it something 90 degrees except 74 for this one this one's like 128 this one you tighten by hand or with a wrench and a six millimeter hex for here bottom one ball joint to knuckle is 50 and then tight 90 degrees so you yeah, guys i'm gonna do all this and i'll see you guys after everything is done already guys popping in here again i want to give you guys a couple tips number one when you're doing all this like the way that i did with disconnecting all this at once when you're putting it back on make sure to have somebody to help you because my, i needed my dad to help me when i lifted it up he basically threaded the lower ball joint bolt in same with the top so if you guys wanted to do the shortcut way that i did it make sure to have somebody help you also basically the whole thing is done you just gotta do a couple more things one of the tips for this one as i mentioned before grab your hex your six millimeter grab your ratcheting wrench make this easier on yourself basically guys when you're tightening this have this right here the hex so basically whenever you spin it this pushes against the knuckle so you don't have to have somebody else helping you to hold that that's how you tighten that one back up i gotta tighten the axle nut gotta tighten the tie rod i think i got three more bolts to torque i got one here the tie rod i gotta get the cotter pin wherever i put it and the axle nut so one two three and then i gotta torque the bottom one four so guys i'm gonna torque all these and i'll get back to you guys in a second all right you guys when you're putting your wheel back on make sure to take off your cap so when you lower the car you can torque down your axle nut to spec so let me set this up Actually, let's do a little one hand pov tighten these lugs up start pattern can i do this one hand yes come on baby first person pov torquing lug nuts So now, make sure everything is clear from underneath the car. Should be good. Move that. Lower this baby down. It is darker outside. And we finished. It took a couple hours. Um, it's not hard, but it's not easy. So a lot of people are like, oh, CV axle is easy. People be telling you that. People are definitely lying to you because the hardest part of the whole thing is getting the axle out. So without further ado, I'm going to go on a little drive. I'm going to clean everything up because I'm disgusting right now. You guys see dirt, grease all over, tools everywhere. <laughs> Y'all, this diff fluid got literally everywhere, bro. Alrighty, guys. So I'm going to go ahead, clean up, take this car for a drive, and I'll tell you guys what I think. And then obviously I'm going to check in a couple days just to make sure there's no nothing else leaking. I'm going to take off the shield again clean it up put it back on just so i can check it in a couple days so i'll see you guys in a second but you guys we're gonna scoot under the car real quick and i'll show you guys what i mean i'll show you guys why i think i was correct in replacing what i did you guys see that right where my lights on that's the cv the drain plug is on the right of that you guys see right here this is where it's leaking this is where all the fluid was in the pan and obviously over all the body when I spilled the diff fluid, you guys see it dripped all over. So, you guys see I cleaned. Oops. You guys see I cleaned the pan. Can I make sure everything is good? And in a couple of days, I'm gonna come back under here, make sure everything is good. There's no leaks, so I think we are good to go. All right, just started the car up. We're gonna go for a little drive. We're gonna see if it's fixed. Alrighty, guys. As of right now, the car seems to be sounding normal. 
Anyways, yeah, no, this this sounds fine. But you guys see we're in rear wheel drive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna floor it. When I turn right, we're gonna see what happens. Control Sport, which means all wheel drive. I'm listening for sounds and I don't hear them. Perfect. We're gonna do a little acceleration. Three, two, one. Alrighty, so yeah, I guess I'll update you guys in a couple days. Like in a future video, but I'm gonna go back to the house, end the video off, because I think that's a success, man. So I'll see you guys in a second. Anyways, guys, that at the end of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys find it informational and helpful if you guys are having that same leak. I'm pretty sure the problem is fixed. If it is not, I'll, I'll update you guys in a future video. Shout out to the frogs in the background. Anyways, guys, we're on the road to 2,000 subscribers, so make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe, make sure to turn notifications on, Share this video with your friends. Without further ado, guys, me and Big Red will catch you in the next one. Peace out, guys.